to control building those today, and my name, believe it or not, is Neil. <laughs> not that Neil. Another Neil will be coming on in just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, the experience you're about to have is a result of a six-year, $5 million project to restore these rooms to the way they were on July 20th, 1969, first room landing. It's a 14-minute multimedia presentation, and we are always anxious to share it with you. One thing to be aware of, though, folks, double-check if you will, there can be no flash photography uh, in, in this room at any time. And then after the presentation, we will have special lighting so that the room is much, br much brighter and has a lot more detail to it. Get some really good pictures then, because I know you want to get your snaps. So, on, once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the historic Apollo Mission Control. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gene Kranz. I would like to welcome you to the historic Mission Operations Control Room. I served as the flight director during the descent and landing of the first American astronauts on the moon. In 2019, this room from the consoles with related flight documents and artifacts to the carpet, wallpaper, and mission medallions was restored and preserved to the Apollo era. Even the viewing room seats you are sitting in are original, as are the telephone and communications booths and the simulation control room. The large screens at the front of the room display trajectory data, which we use to control the spacecraft. The clocks above the screens helped us to keep track of mission milestones, including how long the rocket engine fired and loss of radio signal times as the spacecraft moved behind the moon. And the two viewing room televisions to your upper left and right displayed historical network news coverage as it was broadcast. You're about to be transported back to the afternoon of July 20th, 1969, as Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin descended to the lunar surface. Four teams of flight controllers worked around the clock in support of a mission, monitoring every aspect of the spacecraft life support, fuel levels, altitude, and communications. On that day, my team was responsible for guiding Lunar Module Eagle to a safe landing on the moon. You will hear our voices and the voices of the astronauts as we encountered a series of unexpected computer alarms. This is the Apollo 11 descent, just as we experienced it. Filter is go. Copy, filter go. Altitude 5,200 feet. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, you're go for landing. Over. Copy, Celtic, go. I got it, go, Planning. Three thousand feet. Copy, Same type, we're going. Same type, we're going. Flight side, right on, real good. Right, two thousand feet. End of the egg, forty-seven degrees. Roger. Okay, keep me in Forty-seven degrees. How's our margin looking, Bob? It looks okay. We're going. We're gonna hide. Roger. Eagle looking great. You're going. No, there's no sign. Zero copy. Up to the big egg. Looks good. Roger. Select final things egg. Roger. 1400 feet, still looking very good. You have it. We have another 1202 alarm. Roger, no flight. Roger, 1202, we copy it. How you doing? Control. We look good here. Fine. How about you, Telcom? Go. Guidance, you happy? Go. Fido. Go. We have another 1202 alarm. 21 down. 33 degrees. 100 feet down, 19. 540 feet down to 30, out of 15. Attitude home. Okay, asshole. Attitude home. I think we better be quiet. Roger. Okay, the other call outs from now on will be fuel. 150 feet down to 4. 30 foot down now. 
Approximately six hours after Eagle landed safely on the moon, the flight controllers prepared to receive the first television transmission from Tranquility Base. Along with millions around the world, we watched in suspense as a man from Earth prepared to take the first step on another celestial body. And we're in the picture on the TV. It's a good picture, huh? Network telecom. Uh, a great deal of contrast, Jeff, and it's currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Network telecom telling Burke. Okay, stand by. We're working on it. Can you confirm that your uh, reverse switch is in the proper position? Okay, we have a great night, Jeff. Stand by. We're already running out of half on the camera. We are in reverse. Stand by. All right, good, thank you. The oxygen temperatures are coming down. Look good. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. You can take a 10 second look, you just stepped on a little pad. Okay. Okay, I just checked to uh, get back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, it hasn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we got it. Pretty good slow jump.
network? Go ahead, network. Let's switch to another station or something. Right, we're looking at honeysuckle now. It's a little bit cleaner. Okay. I'm going to step off the land now. Get it done here. 28, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Upon exiting the lander, the astronauts' positions were constantly tracked by mission control back rooms, and those movements were projected on the large front room display for flight controllers to monitor. Next you will see, as we did, Armstrong and Aldrin reveal a plaque on the lunar module ladder, which remains on the moon to this day. For those who haven't uh, read the plaque, uh, we'll read the plaque that's on the front landing gear of this lamp. There's two hemispheres, one showing each of the two hemispheres of Earth. Underneath it says, After erecting the American flag on the moon and spending time adapting to the one-sixth gravity, Armstrong and Aldrin received an unexpected communication. Yeah, that's something rather important is coming up here. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston, Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they, too, join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity, and, and with the vision for the future. The uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. After 21 and a half hours on the lunar surface, Armstrong and Aldrin rendezvoused with Command Module Pilot Michael Collins in lunar orbit, returning to Earth and splashing down safely in the Pacific Ocean three days later. Working under the command of Mission Control, a fleet of naval helicopters from the USS Hornet were sent to retrieve the Apollo 11 crew. <coughs>
Uh, first of all, I think you all know that the events taking place here today uh, represent the culmination of the tremendous Apollo effort initiated by President Kennedy. I think your personal uh, dedication and professionalism displayed here in Mission Control have contributed very substantially to the posture that this country enjoys today in space exploration. Uh, as a personal uh, expression of our gratitude for your help, your cooperation and tolerance over the years, General Phillips and Chet Lee and Tom McMullen and I uh, have left in custody with uh, Flight Director Gene Kranz a small token of our esteem and thanks. Uh, lots of luck and don't choke on the bubbles. After 18 days in quarantine here in Houston, the Apollo 11 crew toured the country and the world as America's heroes. Many of my mission control personnel and I flew six more lunar missions from this room, which contributed to the designation of this building as a National Historic Landmark. We thank you for visiting today.